Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Monday, February 8th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in, and there are four systems moving across the U.S. to bring snow to all 50 states. All 50. Well, 48 anyway. Probably all 50, because there's snow in Hawaii, record snow, and snow in Alaska every day. Hey, hey, but the big story, we're in a deep freeze all week long. Keep calm. It's boom time. It's early February and it's already the snowiest month in five years in New York City. Heavy snow predicted in these four systems will obliterate that record, probably the snowiest year ever in New York City lining up. After nearly a snowless winter year ago, New York City has made up more of it with the time around, whatever that means. Central Park is sitting at 19.9 inches. And as I said, four storms on the way. This winter, snow rises in the record books in Nebraska. They could kiss my <whistles> Platts Mouth Airport reports snow for 21 hours over the weekend. A weekend of tweaking. You know about Nebraska City. Hello. Top 10 snowiest since World War II at this point. And it's, well, we got a lot of winter to go. Southern Wisconsin could threaten cold streak record with no end in sight to the frigid weather. And the polar vortex will be dipping in and we will be tipping into those models in just a moment. Chicago's deep February freeze could become the longest such cold stretch ever. It's pretty, that's chilly in Chi-Town, isn't it? Ever. More snow, midweek storm could bring more snow to D.C. where those deserve to be buried. Polar Vortex will bring an Arctic blast, and we will show you where that blast will go, all the way to Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Four skiers killed in Utah out of eight, and we're having, they were living life to the fullest, but more skiers have been killed this year in the Rocky Mountains, halfway through the winter than ever before. So, very bad year, and it will only get worse. Here we're looking at some of the models. Here's the European combo. Temperature versus average. This is the second week of February across the U.S. And you can see that extreme plume of cold air all the way up from the Yukon Territory down to Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. And let's talk about the deepest five-day snow reports this week, February 3rd through the 7th. And that's just a few days, folks. Lake Louise seeing it two feet, two feet in apex. Castle Mountain, two feet. Almost three feet in Discovery, two feet in Bridger Bowl, five feet in Jackson Hole. Holy crap, that, that rhymed. <laughs> almost four feet in Bluebird in Colorado. Hello, Steamboat. Vail seeing almost three feet. Foot down here, Alpine Meadows out in just east of Sacramento, seeing a foot and a half. Stevens Pass, three feet. Mount Baker, almost three feet. More coming. Nobody's bumming. Let's check the models, and we'll run them through. Here's your Tuesday, which is your lose day if you're in southern Indiana and western Ohio, for goodness sakes. Look for a good swath of six to eight inches moving through there. And that storm is going to move up through the northeast, north Jersey, south New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and the like. Rhode Island's not going to be left out on that mess. And more is coming, a second system right after that Thursday through Friday, while snow moves into the Pacific Northwest, down into the Sierras. Hello. Northern Utah, all of the uh, Appalachians in the central Appalachian should be getting a nice little pick up there, a foot or two. And then here we are Saturday and the beginning of the Valentine's Day weekend debacle. Storm deep, this low will deepen in the southern Rockies, dumping heavy amounts in New Mexico, Azarona, and it will move east like a beast. Take a look at that, Nebraska, Oklahoma, North Texas, Arkansas. Misery and Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, a huge swath of 12 to 16 will move through there. The same age, uh, regions that got hit by the big nor'easter uh, just a few days ago, West Virginia, Northern Virginia, Western Maryland, and Southern uh, PA. Hey, hey, and then another system and another system. And Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, you could be picking up some global warming goodness by the second, third week of February. Just saying. 
Those are models. But let's check the polar vortex so we don't get your knickers in a bunch. Let's just figure out where this cold air is going to get and who needs to be pre prepared for it. Now, we always say proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. And let's just walk it through. If it's going to get so epically cold, we need to bring you up to speed here. Let's bring it up to the eighth. There we are. And you can see this. Uh, we're looking at the pink dip down here. And that's really what we want to be avoiding. But wait till you see some of these cold temps and see what it's going to be like in Florida by the 18th. Here we are on Monday today. And here's your Tuesday morning. We're, we're, we're talking most of Wisconsin having temperatures below minus 10, as well as North Dakota and a large swath, 80% of Montana, minus 10 to minus 20 in the morning. But it's not going to warm up much. It, it'll barely get above freezing. Above zero, my bad. <laughs> freezing is the least of their worries. That would be 40 degrees warmer in some of these areas. And here we are at Thursday, February 11th. That cold plume is coming deeper and you can see minus 25 to minus 30 in Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, say it ain't soda, but it is. And it will barely warm up to minus 10 in those states. And then Friday, we're talking, could be getting closer to minus 30 in most of the entire state of Minnesota almost all of Montana, and it will not warm up above minus 10. During the day in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, say it ain't soda, Iowa, misery. And of course, Wisconsin and Minnesota, all below zero. Take a look at this. Nebraska could not be coming out of negative temperatures for the day. Nebraska, 17 degrees for the high in Texas, 17 for the high in Texas, 19. Okay, you get 22. Who knew? Now, this plume is not going to give up. Here's Saturday the 18th. It's going to plunge deeper and going to bring sub-zero temperatures on Sunday into Texas. The nexus of the Schmexus is minus 4, minus 10, minus 15. Hello. Holy macaroni. Minus 15 in Texas, 4 degrees in Houston and Dallas, 3 degrees. Can you believe that? I think they're, they're going to lose their mind. Now, this is a dangerous plume of continuous cold air, 30 degrees below freezing, that's going to wreak havoc on pipes in these regions. So you're going to see epic failures. Here's that plume pushing down into Illinois and Indiana and Missouri, minus 20 minus 23, minus 11, one degree in Mississippi, 12 degrees in Southern Mississippi. Are you kidding me? Oh, and then this freeze line is going to move towards Florida, February 16th. The epic cold continues. February 16th, look at those lows, 13 in Southern Louisiana. Oh my goodness, 22 degrees, 19 degrees for Alabama, southern Alabama on the coast with the most, nine degrees on the coast. That freeze line went into the Gulf. That's impossible. I've never seen a freeze line move into the Gulf like this. Oh, stay tuned. As this cold, February 18th, plunges into Florida, 46 degrees in South Florida, Estero, where my bro is. And then by the next day, it could be 35 in Miami. Make me a hammy with a Sammy. All right, so those are signs of the things to come. Ding, ding. It's cold outside. It's winter. Yes, we know this. But it's a winter to remember. One of the coldest winters on record all time recorded in Chicago and other regions. Could be the coldest winter ever for Florida. I've never seen this type of cold spells lining up one after the other so we'll see how that uh transpires but right now a wintry week featuring an arctic air mass that will stay in place until the end of february winter is gripping much of the u.s this week as an arctic air mass with frigid temperatures is entrenched over the central u.s and will expand into the south and the northwest which is not the best right now because of the current administration but it is probably 
The only place you won't get arrested if you smoke meth. <laughs> anyway. Where was I? Snow is expected to move through the north, east, and New England on Tuesday. An extensive area of snow and freezing rain is expected to set up from the southern plains to mid-Atlantic over the next several days and repeat every two days and repeat and repeat. It's like a washing machine cycle of winter storms. Saskatchewan deep freeze sticking around for another week. Heads up in Saskatchewan. People are freezing to death, and we'll get to that. Vancouver weather, record low temps possible as winter wave hits the B.C. coast. So be aware in British Columbia. and Dawson's Creek, a woman dies in extreme cold walking home from the neighbor's house. Now, she was totally hammered. So this is a two-fold lesson. If you drink heavy amounts of alcohol and you want to walk home when it's minus 30 degrees, be prepared to die when you lie down to take a warm nap in the snow. But to her uh, defense, it was negative 45C. So there is that. And our prayers go out to the frozen woman who couldn't make it home from the neighbors. Snow dump puts northern Germany in deep freeze. We predicted this uh, a week before it happened. It happened. And now they're in the deep freeze in Germany as well as the Netherlands. The Dutch were hit with the first snowstorm in a decade as Europe shivers. And there's more snow on the way. Hey, hey. So stay tuned as we report it. Alpine skiing world championships postponed after the storm dumps three feet of snow on the course. 15 feet in a month. Postponed because of too much snow in the Alps. Hello. How does a glacier burst? Too much snow. Flooding in India leaves 26 dead and 165 missing as they were preparing for global warming. And no more snow. Now, unfortunately, out of the 165, 170 missing, well, they're not missing. They're just buried. They're dead. And we do have video footage of that. And so put your children to bed. This is, could be devastating. Probably not. It's pretty awesome. So homeschoolers, this is what happens when there is an infarction in a glacier or a major collapse in an ice dam similar to the Younger Dryas event which flooded the entire western and southern coasts of North America in a catastrophic flood thousands of feet deep. Now, let me just break down the video for you real quick here, just to bring some clarity. Before we got to that shot, what you see down here is the actual hydroelectric plant. Okay, so here, you see the hydroelectric plant. These are buildings or structures down here. The dam is above it. There are people in there. And this water is 180 to 300 feet high, splashing, and coming at a rate of supersonic speed. And supposedly there were little people that looked like ants down here, a hundred people running around. And this is what happened. Moriashi Akban. That means they're all dead. Yes!
absolutely insane and gloriously the video we showed you had some amazing uh well positive results at the end there several people saved now it's not over folks um this dam is where are we there are still people trapped under the dam as of today rescuers on monday were trying to rescue 37 power plant workers who remain trapped in a tunnel and you can see there one of them being saved so hopefully that's signs that many other are being going to be saved give them a thumbs up over there at the china daily post or wherever that was links will be below seismic update there are no quakes of note except that the entire world is on fire we have a 30 percent uptick in average amount of earthquakes worldwide in the moderate range of five magnitude, especially. So we're waiting on something. Worldwide volcano news update. There are no real volcanoes of note erupting, except that we've had an increase in volcanic activity over the last few days. And that should increase forevermore over the last dec for the coming decade and more. Climate change, global warming may have started before the industrial revolution, according to research in a paper coming out, which blows a another big hole in the global warming scam. This China study says that their investigation of coral reefs in the Paracel Islands suggests that South China Sea began warming up in 1825, decades before uh, massive outputs of CO2 in the atmosphere, which means that there's no way that when you start something 40 years later that it, ha it caused the climate to start warming five decades before. Al Gore's a whore. Watch a billion years of shifting tectonic plates in 40 mesmerizing seconds in this new update coming out right here. And this is all hypothetical, but it's according to what I've studied my entire life in academia and what we've been working on piecing together through 50 years of study in the fields of stratigraphy, paleogeography, um, petrography, oceanography, and so on and so forth. I, I'm sure there's more ologies in there I missed out. But using uh, petrography especially and matching up rocks from one continent to, to the other that are mineral mineralogically similar or exact, we can conclude that these continents were probably linked at one time. And so then you have to extrapolate from there and create the story on how these plates once were connected and moved around the continent. Now, it will be interesting for me to marinate on this project and look at it in more de de detail and depth for the next two or three days to come up with a narrative on how this may or may not be true. And, and, and is the earth particularly smaller and expanding during this time? And did they miss out on that? Because... When you look at the scenario on the, a constant globe that's the same size, it looks kind of ridiculous. Because if you just pause it on some of these times, what, what you can see is all the continents are down by one side of the planet. Now, if that was wobbling, it would wobble out of its orbit. So there, there's some bad news coming out on this uh, video interpretation. But check it out because it's definitely knowledge that you need to be soaking up in the coming times. Earth's magnetic poles show signs they're about to flip, and it's our contention that these magnetic reversal periods or excursions cause the lithosphere to loosen and the plates to move. So the gradualism idea in geology is probably not correct, and what happens is there are short periods of time where massive amounts of geologic activity occur, and then in, in between, very gradual periods of quiescence. That's a scientific term that we use a lot because we're living currently in a time of quiescence and it's about to hit the fan. <laughs> now, Horse Canyon could be representative of one, some of these events where the sh hits the fan. And it is also one of the hardest areas to get to in the most obscure regions with the oldest pictographs in the entire world that are from Native Americans. And we're not talking eclipsing Lascaux or any of those amazing arts from Neanderthal and other groups. But this is from our ancestors in the U.S., in America. And these pictographs are currently dated to maybe 3,500 years old. 
but recent study has shown that they could be up to 9,000 years old. And we're going to go out there and do our own investigation uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of the coming week, the February uh, blizzard, which will be moving across the country. There's one part in the country where we can go see these just west of Moab in the Green River Valley that could actually be warm and completely enjoyable with no humans whatsoever. So we're going to be entering this sec a secluded canyon for your benefit and share the knowledge with you as we uncover it. Horseshoe Canyon glyphs, barrier style, the oldest pictographs in North America, potentially, but not the oldest petroglyphs. And there are petroglyphs and pictographs here, and we'll be exploring them both with you live from Utah, from the hotel room. So check out our podcast on Friday. We'll first, we'll be going to Newspaper Rock, north of Monticello, and then we'll end up in Green River, and Saturday all day we'll be down in the Horseshoe Canyon. Uh, and we're going to be covering. There's multiple panels as we go in, and there are, are dozens of occupations here, dating back all the way to the Clovis. So this canyon has occupation since 11, 12,000 years ago, all the way through the destruction in the Younger Darius into the modern time. So that is the beautiful nature of this Encyclopedia Britannica, which is a canyon in Utah. And we'll share it with you live. And that's a boom to knowledge. Always hiding down below, but always coming to the forefront. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons. Without you, we could not do this. We wouldn't be dedicating our life to this information, planning trips, uh, planning upcoming interviews, and the like. It's all for you to share knowledge with the public in these coming times. That's why we started the channel. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the magnetosphere is waning, the grand solar minimum is impending. And the administration, well, they're going to suck the wealth out of you. Be safe. We love you. Buy Bitcoin. Do it now. Do a dab.